How are you? I'm telling you what. The first question I was going to ask you this morning was simply, what are you thankful for? I am thankful that we have people way smarter than me that understand computers and that are willing to drive to Suffolk to get more computers and then are willing to figure out why speakers don't work. You know what? I mean, I didn't think this was a big sermon. I thought this is a typical, it's the week of Thanksgiving. But for whatever reason, Satan doesn't want us to do this. And you know what? You heard what I said earlier. He sucks. Amen? What are you thankful for this morning? I can say, I'm thankful that I got a roof over my head. You know, for the last four weeks, Dawn and I have been camping out inside of our house. Because most of you don't know, our water heater erupted on October 15th and ruined all the wood in our house. All of it. And let me tell you what our house has in terms of wood. And the kitchen floor, too. So the kitchen floor, the dining room, the living room, our biggest, our only hallway, uh, one, two, three, three closets and a pantry. Okay? So the, the, I called the insurance company. They came within an hour. Literally, within an hour, the restoration company was there. And all of a sudden, we're watching our home get destroyed as they're just ripping crap up and throwing it outside. And then they brought in these big industrial fans, and for four days, we listened to <laughs> until they decided it was dry. Now, they don't come in and just say, it looks dry. They got their technology people now, right? They come in with meters and stick it into the floor, and it tells you how much moisture is in the floor. Finally, it got dry. And then we waited a week to pick out the floor. And once we picked out the floor, we waited another week for it to come in. And once it came in, we had to wait another three or four days for them to schedule to come out and start. And then they told us, oh, we're going to move all your furniture out. And I went, I can't live without a TV. I got to have a place to set, and I got to have a place to sleep. So for the last week and a half, we had a TV, a couple of chairs, and a bedroom. And that was it. And uh, we've been camping out ever since. But this week, Friday. They finished. All our stuff is back in our house. I'm not finished. We have 25 boxes that we have to unpack. But God is good. And I am so thankful I have a roof over my head, okay? I'm thankful that I have a computer. I'm thankful I have uh, my, my phone. I'm thankful I have a fairly big-sized TV. I'm thankful I have the most amazing wife in the world and the smartest kids in the world. I'm thankful I got cool in-laws, and I'm thankful that I've got a neat family. That's the things I'm thankful for. But you know what? There's one more thing I'm thankful for that I haven't shared with you, and I'm going to share it this morning. And you're going to say, what is it, Pastor Steve? Come on. What is it, Pastor Steve? We have a lease. For 5555 Portsmouth Boulevard. We haven't signed it yet because we're trying to do some little wiggle room stuff, but I tell you what, the lease is amazing. They've given us free months. They're giving us an opportunity to get into the building as of December 1st. They promised to move the equipment that's in the building out of the building very soon. We have draw uh, architectural drawings of the building as it exists now so that we can take to our architect to get our drawings done. We're ready to move forward to the city for an occupancy permit. It looks like, and I trust God for this, it looks like we're going to start construction in December. It looks like that sometime near the end of January, 1st of February, we will be moving from this place to that place. Yeah. I am thankful. I, I told the elders a year ago, a year ago, we were saying we're going to start doing services. And a year ago this time, we didn't have a place to do them. And it didn't get real till Billy gave us this place. And about two weeks before we started, I looked at John Dowdy and I went, oh, my God, this is real. It's really happening. This morning, I looked at the elders and went, oh, my God, this is real. It's really happening. But God is blessing. So I wanted to share that with you this morning. I shared it with the elders. We've been doing a bunch of email back and forth. But God has given us favor. The landlord wants us there. The city will want us there. <laughs> so God is good. And so here we are the week of Thanksgiving with all kinds of things to be thankful about. The fact is, 
when we stop and think about it, everything we're thankful for actually revolves back to people. Because you can have the biggest screen TV in the world, but if you can't share it with somebody, who cares? You can go to Las Vegas, and they say what, stays, what go, happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, but if you can't come home and tell somebody about it, it don't matter. You know? The whole idea of being thankful for anything revolves around the fact that God has placed people in your life, some you're thankful for, and some you ain't. Are we honest? You know, God has put some great people in my life, praise God, but he's put some people in my life, oh gosh, why did he do that? But he did it for a reason, and we should be thankful for it. God says we should be thankful. You know, and I think about this idea of having people. A couple of years ago, a couple of years, a couple of months ago, I went to the Amplify Conference, which is put on by Acts 2, and we were down in Carolina, and we just had a great time for a couple of days, but I wasn't on the same page everybody else was. We arrived on a Monday, and the conference ended on Tuesday, and I thought we all were going to stay overnight Tuesday and come back Wednesday, and at the end of the conference, I'm finding out everybody that was at the conference from Thrive was going home. So I ended up spending the night by myself in Smithfield, North Carolina, where their only claim to fame is an outlet mall, okay? And I'm like, this is crazy. And I'm, I'm on the phone with Dawn going, everybody left. Nobody told me they weren't staying. And, and I'm going to stay because I paid for the room, you know? And then I said, I got to go do supper. I went to Cracker Barrel by myself. And I sat in Cracker Barrel by myself. I entertained myself with my phone waiting for my food. And as quickly as I could eat it, I was gone. You know why? Because it's horrible to be alone. It's horrible to eat alone. You see, God has made us all understand that there's people in our lives. And unless we share stuff with the people in our lives, it's miserable. And I can guarantee you, if you are alone long enough, you will go freaking crazy. <laughs> Am I right? God has put people in our lives, and now here we are at the week of Thanksgiving. We need to realize the people that he put in our lives are what we're supposed to be thankful for. And I'm just rambling, but I want you to understand that, okay? I know we're half an hour behind, and with me, we're going to be an hour late getting out of here. But the fact is, when I think about Thanksgiving, and what I think about are the people, the friends, the family that God has put in my life. That's what I need to be thinking about. So the, the question becomes, how do I go about showing appreciation to the people that are in my life? And that's what I want to talk about this morning. I, I looked up the word appreciate. And you know what it actually means? It means to increase in value. Okay? To increase in worth. I mean, you go buy a house, and the last thing you want for it to happen is it decrease in value. Right? Right? You want to buy a house. I mean, give you a good example. Dawn and I built our house 35 years ago, okay, for $36,000. And the last city assessment on our house was $216,000. Now, I would really, really worry if the last city assessment was $25,000, okay? And every one of you here is the same way, Right? We buy things hoping they will increase in value, appreciate. We don't want them to depreciate. And, and the fact of the matter is when you appreciate somebody, you increase their value. When you actually appreciate the people that God has put in your life, you increase their value in their eyes as well as in your eyes. So what I want to do this morning in the time we have left, I want to give you some tools to help us really appreciate the people that God's put in our life so that Hopefully, this Thanksgiving can be one of the best Thanksgivings you've ever had. So let me give you, first off, two reasons why the idea of uh, appreciating people is so important. So you got your outlines? Now, this is deep, okay? This is theologically deep, so you're going to have to follow me and track with me. You ready? Here we go. Number one, we need it. <laughs> That's theologically deep. We need it. We need to be appreciated from time to time. Every one of us. We all do. We need it. It feels good 
when somebody says, I appreciate you. I can give you a perfect example. In, I'm going to use Dawn in this week and our move and all this stuff that's going on in our house. Um, over top of our cabinets, one year for Christmas, she had these, she had these baskets over top of our cabinets because our cabinets don't go all the way to the ceiling. But one year for Christmas, we saw one of the fam- uh, you, some of you remember Sue and Roger Hilfer. Sue had this garland over top of her cabinets in her kitchen, and, and Roger had wrapped little white lights in it and little ribbon, and it looked amazing. So, 25 years ago, we did the same thing. <laughs> and they've been there for 25 years. <laughs> it looks good, right? Well, we decided, Dawn says, that stuff's got to go. Because in this process of getting new floors, we're going to kind of revamp our kitchen, too. So I told her Friday, I'll take care of it, dear. It had been there so long as I grabbed the garland, it had dry rotted, and it was falling apart in my hands. The ribbon had dry, and I got it all off. I got everything clean, and then I took new Christmas lights that I went and bought and zigzagged them and stapled them on the top of our cabinets all the way around. There. Oh, it is so cool looking. When you plug it in, there's this glow on the top of our cat, right? And Dawn came in, and she goes, that looks so good. And she hugged me, and she kissed me. That was amazing. Okay? I felt 10 feet tall because what? She appreciated me. You know what? I needed it. I needed it. I needed it. And the fact is, we all do. It feels good. It's hard to go through life if people don't appreciate you. It's hard. It's hard to, okay? In fact, I believe that it would get to the point, if nobody appreciated us, that we wouldn't even want to get up in the morning. We wouldn't. I think that's so important. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11 says, this is Paul talking, encourage one another and build each other up. Encourage one another and build each other up. Appreciation is the key word for every relationship that we have. It doesn't matter if it's your spouse, your co-workers, your friends. You build them up. You increase their value. You lift their value and their worth in their eyes. It's, it's, it's what we got to do. It's important to know that we matter to people. The second thing, deep again, theologically deep. Ready? Here we go. God commanded it. God commanded it. And I think that's the biggest deal of all. God said we're supposed to do it. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29 says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful, get this, for building others up according to their needs. This is not only something we need, this is something God has commanded each one of us to do. And that verse didn't say, if you feel like it. Nowhere in that verse does it say, if you want to. Nowhere in that verse does it say to get something out of it for yourself. It says to do what's helpful. Appreciate the people that are in our lives. Now, most of you, some of you have heard of a term that we used to use a lot, FDFX. FDFX stands for fully devoted followers of Christ. The fact of the matter is, if we are sold out to Jesus... If we are fully devoted followers of him, then that means we've got to function like he functioned. That means we've got to act like he act, okay? And the fact is, Jesus was an encourager. He was an encourager. He was a people builder. And if we're committed to him, if we're committed to being like he is, then we've got to be encouragers too. We've got to be building up the people that God has placed in our lives. The truth is, when you appreciate people, You lift them up. And when you lift them up, you're the one that ultimately gets blessed because of it. Think about that. You're the one that ultimately gets blessed. Now, we got to appreciate people. We said that. We know God tells us to do it. I want us to look at three things that we can do to appreciate every single person that's in our lives, no matter who they are, okay? And and then we're going to look at some ways we can actually go about doing it. So what I want to do is tie all this together by figuring out how we can express this and express thanks to God. So it comes down to what I should do to appreciate the people that God put in my life. And God knows some of them it's going to take a whole lot more to appreciate them. And I ain't the only one, right? You all feel that way too. Okay, all right, so let's look at that. Number one, I think we should appreciate people's loyalty. I think we should appreciate people's 
loyalty. That's a big deal, guys. That is a really big deal. Philippians 1, verses 3 and 5 says, I thank God every time I remember you because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Paul was writing to a church. He was writing to the church at Philippi, and he was appreciating something about them. And if you look at it, he wasn't saying some of the normal things people would say. Because understand, the church at Philippi was the largest church, it was a mega church, in Asia Minor. And Paul wasn't saying, I appreciate the fact that you've got thousands of people coming to your church every week. He didn't say that. The church at Philippi sent Paul more money than any other church ever did, okay? But Paul didn't say, I appreciate the fact that you've been sending me money. He didn't say that. And he certainly didn't say, I appreciate the fact that you agree with everything I say and do all the time. He didn't say any of that. He said, I appreciate you because you're loyal to the gospel. I appreciate you because you're loyal to Jesus. That's what he said. The fact that, that some of you in this room, and I'm one of them, okay? So I can go, some of us in this room. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> we need to appreciate our spouses just because they're there. Just because they've stuck around. Dawn has been with me for 38 and a half years, and there's at least 100 times she could have gone, dude, I'm out of here. But she didn't. And I appreciate that. We need to look at our spouses and say, I appreciate you. I appreciate you for your loyalty to me. I mean, I think about people that stick with a losing team. All right, Rabbit, don't say a word, Rabbit. Where are you, Rabbit? Rabbit, don't you say a word. It's been a long time since the Redskins have even gone to the Super Bowl, okay? But they're like family to me. I can dog them all I want to but don't you, okay? But think about this. Here's the, here's the point. Here's the point. Have you ever been a fan of a team that, you know, th their record is like 141 losses and two wins, you know? And, and most of the fans have burned their, their gear that goes along. But if you on the sidelines rooting for them, I can guarantee you there are 54 players that look at you and go, thank you, you know? I mean, the fact that you don't turn and run because you could turn and run, you know? People end up appreciating people that just stay around. We do, you know. And, and, and I've had a couple of friends in my life who've been friends for 25-plus years. And they have seen me in the worst of times. They have seen me in the best of times. They have seen me snap and argue with Dawn. They have seen me get mad at stuff I shouldn't have got mad at. And they're still my friends. Amen. We need to appreciate the loyalty that people have for us. Number two. We need to also appreciate people's differences. We need to appreciate people's differences. Now, this may be a little harder to accomplish because most of the time if somebody's different from us, we don't really like that, okay? But it's just as important. It is just as important. In Colossians, Paul said this, Colossians 3, verses 13 through 15. He says, bear with each other and forgive each other. If someone does wrong you, forgive that person because the Lord forgave you. Even more than all this, clothe yourself in love. Love is what holds you all together in perfect unity. Let the peace that Christ gives control your thinking because you were all called together in one body to have peace. Always be thankful. If you're taking notes, circle that phrase, one body. You know what that means? One body means people in community together with each other. It means people that are in relationship with each other that's a cool thing, right? And the fact is, you don't have to be uniform to be in unity. You agree? Yeah. I mean, I look around this room. This is the launch team for, for Thrive Church, you know? And nobody is as good looking as I am. <laughs> or as humble as I am. But you're here. I mean, look around the room. Nobody looks the same. We certainly have major differences, and that's what's cool. That's what's cool. We have folks that are younger than me, folks that are older than me, folks that are skinnier than me, folks that are smarter than me, and we can make this list go on and on and on and on. Fact is, we're different from each other. We don't have to all look like me. 
to be in unity. You know? Right? Praise God. But let me tell you what. You laugh all you want to. You go look in the mirror. We ain't got to look like you either. Thank the Lord. Am I right? But we are in unity. Amen? And that's so important, guys. That is so important because those two things are totally different. We ain't got to look alike. We ain't got to walk alike. We ain't got to dress alike. And we ain't got to smell alike to be in unity. And the truth is, no matter what we look like, smell like, walk like, dress like, we all bring something that's important to the table. We all bring something that's important to the table. Let me give you a perfect example. The elders that I've, I've asked to be elders for Thrive Church. Every one of them brings something to the table that I can't bring, that I don't have. And you know what? Without them at the table with me, this church would not be moving forward. Amen. And you know what else we did? We made a really smart move when we brought our elders together. We brought our, our wives into the elders mix with us. You know why? Because guys left to their own devices in a room with the door closed can make some <laughs> stupid decisions. <laughs> and we go home. We go home and tell our wives, and they went, you did what? And then we got to go back into the room again. I figure we save time, just bring the wives in, right? But the fact is, every wife brings something to the table that is important. And the fact is, every one of you brings something to the table that is important, and we need to appreciate the differences that we have. And you know what? God made us that way for a difference. There's no doubt in my mind that when God was creating us, he had a sense of humor. You know, and I think about he puts puts different couples together that are totally opposites. And it's like, let's see what happens here. This is going to be amazing. <laughs> but, you know, he does. I mean, the fact is, I have spent hours and hours and hours and hours over the course of 20 plus years doing premarital counseling with couples and and talking about the way God draws us together with with opposites and with different talents and different abilities. Let me ask you something. How many in this room? Show of hands, let's be, be honest, are just like our spouses. <laughs> Good, because we were going to have to pray for you. <laughs> you know what I worried about doing premarital counseling? When I'd get a couple that said they were exactly the same. They had exactly the same interests. They had exactly the same hobbies. They liked exactly the same things. Because couples think that's cool, right? But that ends up being boring. That ends up being dangerous. I mean, God put us together as opposites, and you look at it like one person's a morning person, one person's a night person, one person is a talker, and the other one has to be quiet. Uh, <laughs> one person is wide open, and the other person is reserved. I mean, it's easy to focus on our differences and miss the point. Listen, it's easy to focus on our differences and miss the point. Differences give variety, and we need to appreciate that. We need to do that. That's why Paul said appreciate differences. The fact is, we're being able to do that as a mark of maturity. Third thing we need to appreciate about, pe appreciate about people is we need to appreciate people's efforts. We need to appreciate people's efforts. This is one that people struggle with, too. This is one that's hard to wrap our brain around sometimes. First Thessalonians chapter 1, Paul says, We remember before our God and our Father your work produced by your faith your labor prompted by your love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. It's important to look at what Paul didn't say in this verse as much as it is to look at what Paul did say. Paul didn't say, I thank God because you've accomplished so much. I thank God because the work you did was perfect. What Paul did say was he thanked God because they worked hard and they endured. And that's important. Now, set real still. Have you ever asked somebody to help you do something? Maybe it's a project in the garage. Maybe it's out in the yard, in the garden, or whatever. Ask somebody to help you. And you just get irritated at the way they're doing it. <laughs> I can remember when, back years ago when I was teaching Travis how to cut grass. It took Dawn and a lot of patience for me to help him learn how to cut grass because he wouldn't cut it the way I wanted it cut. And what do I mean by that? He'd skip some. That was one thing, but he wouldn't go all the way up and come all the way back and do it like, what was the point? He wasn't doing it the way I wanted it done. And you know what? It's hard for us to appreciate 
their efforts when they're not doing it like we want it done. But the fact of the matter is we need to appreciate people's efforts. That's important. Even if they make a bigger mess, we need to appreciate, appreciate their, their efforts. At every stage, we should appreciate them. It doesn't mean you don't care about quality. It doesn't mean you don't want a job well done. Of course you do. But here's something you might want to write down in the margin of your outline. I found this on the Internet, and I really liked it. It says, if you want quality, brag. If you don't, nag. If you want quality, brag. If you don't, nag. Now, what am I saying? I'm saying don't wait till your wife or your husband is an executive chef in a five-star restaurant to compliment their cooking. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Don't wait until they've, they've earned a million dollars to compliment the way they save money. Okay? Don't wait until your kids live up to your expectations. Uh, listen, guys. Don't wait till your kids live up to your expectations. Tell them that you're proud of them. You hear me? Okay? And, and don't wait for your friends to be perfect, too, because they're not. They're not. Okay? So let me ask you, who do you need to appreciate this week? Maybe, maybe in all three of these areas, hopefully you're thinking of somebody. I really want you to. So in practical terms... How do we do it? In practical terms, I want us to look at three ways we can really do it. This is kind of where the rubber meets the road. Number one, make it real and honest. Make your appreciation of the people in your life real and honest. I mean, you know, one of the mistakes we make sometimes is that we don't appreciate folks to build them up. We appreciate folks so that we can get something out of them. And that's manipulation. Kids are experts at that. Think about it. Your kid, you didn't teach them how to do that, but they know how to do it. They knew how to come to you and get you to do something, get them the latest whatever, right? And do it by manipulating you. But guess what? Your kids grow up to be adults. We grew up to be adults. We know how to do that. The fact is, we don't know how to use appreciation correctly. What we actually know how to do is manipulate people into getting something done for us, and we got to be careful about that. Will Rogers once said, often people pat me on the back because they want me to cough up something. <laughs> Paul said in Romans 12, don't just pretend that you love others. Really, really love them, okay? Pastor Steve paraphrases, don't stroke folks for your own gain. Make it real. Make it real. Be real with your appreciation. And some of you are thinking, gee, Pastor Steve, I don't know if I've got anything real to say. <laughs> Maybe to some of the people in my life I can, but there's a lot of people I'm struggling to figure that out. Then, then ask God to open your heart. Ask God, God to show you where you can say something that's real and that it's honest and that it will increase their value. I mean, there's something that's got to be there if you look for it. Just, just look. Okay, find something in them that you really appreciate. That's all you've got to do. Number two, make it recognizable. Make your appreciation of them recognizable. And what I mean by that is when you take the time to appreciate somebody and give them a compliment, be specific. Maybe I can't say that word. Be specific so they'll know that it's appreciation. I mean, sometimes people say stuff to you and it leaves you going, what were they saying? What do they mean by that? And sometimes you take it totally the wrong way. But you got to be specific when you say it. Now, you know, and, and let me give you an example. I'm not sure if you came up to me and said, you're pretty good for a middle-aged, bald guy, <laughs> that I would really see that as appreciation. <laughs> you know, think about it that way, right? Or if you said, Pastor Steve is a model pastor, because I heard it said once that a model is a cheap plastic imitation. <laughs> So make sure that it's recognizable as appreciation when you do it because that's what we should be doing. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25 says, An anxious heart weighs a man down, but a kind word cheers him up. A kind word cheers him up. I can tell you what, over the 20 plus years that I've been a pastor, over the years I've gotten cards and letters and emails and, and even texts from people saying something that they appreciated about me. And i got to tell you something, reading those things is powerful. 
reading those things is powerful. I can't tell you how awesome the written word is or even the spoken word when it comes just at the right moment. If it's real and if it's recognizable, then there's power in it. And it's power that will change a person's perspective for that day. I guarantee it will. Maybe even for their whole life. Number three, make it regular. Make your appreciation regular. Now, in order for appreciation to really be effective, it has to be regular. And I'm saying this, that you just don't do it on the week of Thanksgiving, okay? And not say anything to them for the other 51 weeks of the year, right? You got to make it regular. It needs to become a part of your lifestyle. It needs to become something you just do for them. And you know what? I have people say all the time things like this. Well, gee, Pastor Steve, I don't need to tell my wife I love her every day. She knows I love her. And to that, I would say, yeah, go ahead. How's that working for you? I can remember once a couple coming to me for, for marriage counseling. Imagine that. Just because I have a pastor on my title, they came for me to mar for marriage counseling. But they did, and they've been married like 23 years, and she was ready to throw in the towel and walk out of the marriage. And as we talked through some of the issues, what I realized was the biggest issue is that her husband hadn't told her he loved her since they were married. And his response was, I do things every day to show her I love her. Well, that may be true. But you know, we have different love languages. And one of them is English. <laughs> you know? And the fact that he hadn't told her he loved her had gotten her to the place where she was ready to throw everything away and walk out of the marriage. And he was blown away. He had no idea because he didn't make his appreciation of her regular. I mean, maybe we ought to learn how to, how to do that. I mean, some people say, well, I just don't know how. Well, you learn how to do the job you do at work. Might have took some effort. It'll take some effort on our part to make our appreciation of the people in our lives regular. The fact is, getting up every morning doesn't come normal to me, okay? But I do it. When the alarm clock goes off and after I've hit the snooze 14 times and thrown the <laughs> clock, I'll get up. Why? Because I've thrown the clock and I know it's going to go off again if I don't go get it, right? No, there's a lot of stuff to us that don't come regular. It doesn't come as a normal part of our lives. But we learn how to do it. So we need to learn how to appreciate the people that are in our lives. Don't just assume they know you care. Don't just assume that they know you love them. You need to tell them. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13 says, but we, but we ought to always thank God for you, brothers and sisters, loved by the Lord. And then down in Galatians chapter 6, Paul says, whenever we can, we should always be kind to everyone, and especially to our Christian brothers. So i got a homework assignment for you. I need for you, I want you to think of somebody that God's put in your life that you need to appreciate. And what I want you to do between now and Thursday is I want you to catch them off guard. Okay? Don't look at them right this minute and say, I appreciate you, because that's not catching them off guard. Catch them off guard. Tell them. Write a note. Call them. Text them. Go visit them. But make it real. We need to appreciate the people that God put in our life. And we need to understand that God commands us to do that. So if you want to make this Thanksgiving any different from any other Thanksgiving that's just filled with a lot of, what's that stuff that's in Turkey? Huh? No, no. This trip, 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 to, trip to something. Trip to fan, right? Okay. If that's all you want your, your Thanksgiving to be is a bunch of trip to fan and you sleep on the couch when the Redskins win against the Giants Thursday night, um, then don't do anything else. But if you want your Thanksgiving to be different this year, to be more than just that stuff, find somebody that God has put in your life and let them know that you really, really appreciate them. So let me just say this. If we're appreciating the people that are in our lives, shouldn't we appreciate God too? Shouldn't we? I mean, there's several reasons we can appreciate God. First is, God put us in this place. Thank you, God. The good times, the bad times, thank you, God. God made a way of escape for us through his son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, God. God has done 
So much. I mean, I was thinking about this week just what has happened here with Thrive. Billy Gardner has blessed this church more than we will ever, ever, ever be able to repay for having this building every single Sunday since the last Sunday in January and refusing to take money, even for utilities. God, you did that. God had to create that. God orchestrated that. Yes, I was at a funeral that Billy was at. Yes, I think God gave me the courage to say something to Billy. But the fact is, God orchestrated all of it. God softened his heart. God made this possible. We need to thank him for it. The fact that we have access to a television studio and top broadcasting equipment to shoot videos, God made that possible. Thank you, God. The fact that we are going to be moving into our own place is God. It's nothing but God. Thank you. The fact that we, were, we saw a door shut and a window closed at another property was God. Thank you, God. There's so much stuff for us to be thankful for. God is at the center of all of it. You want to have the best appreciation or the best Thanksgiving, rather, than you've ever had before? Number one, appreciate the people that God's put in your life. And number two, take time to thank God for it, too. Because if it wasn't for him, none of the other stuff would matter. Amen. Okay? I know it's late. <sighs> I'm tired. <laughs> I'm exhausted. God's amazing. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you so much for who you are. I thank you for the fact, God, that you loved us before we even loved you. That you loved us when we were unlovable to the people in our lives. You loved us. Even before the beginning of time, you orchestrated a plan to bridge a gap between me and you so that we can spend eternity with you. And that plan included sending your son Jesus to die on a cross. I thank you for that. Father, we want to appreciate the people you've put in our lives. I'm asking you to give us what we need to be able to do that, to make up the difference between what we're capable of doing and what you require us to do. And I thank you for that. There may be some people in this room that are saying, gee, Pastor Steve, you're saying you're thankful for God. Why are you thankful for God? I don't understand that. Well, maybe the reason you don't understand that is because you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I want to help you have that relationship. My desire, more than anything else, is that you discover a God that is crazy about you, that loves you more than anybody else. I want to help you do that. God did all the work by sending his son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross. Father, I thank you for that. But right now, in the quietness of this moment, if you've not established a relationship with Jesus and you want to, I can help you do that. It's just a simple prayer. I'm going to pray that prayer. If you've never prayed it and you want to, pray it along with me. I would challenge the rest of you, Thrive, that if you've prayed this prayer already, to pray it again and rededicate your life and your heart to Jesus for this Thanksgiving. All you have to do is pray a prayer that goes like this. You can say it out loud. You can say it silently. I don't care. But say, God, I need you in my life. I realize that, that there's a void that I have to fill with you, and you are the only thing that can fill that void. So I'm asking you right now, in the name of Jesus, to come into my life. I accept your saving grace from Calvary, the fact that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And, oh, yeah, God, I have sinned. I have sinned terrible. I'm asking you to forgive me for that. And I'm asking you right now, in the quietness of this moment, to establish a relationship with me and I with you. I want to spend the rest of my life with you on my side, and I want to spend eternity with you in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen.